we're going to talk about system requirements at this point. And there really aren't a lot of system requirements. You'll see that I'm actually running this on a Macintosh. And in this case, I happen to have just a little MacBook Air. I've got 1.8 gig processor, 4 gig of RAM. We're going to be doing a fair amount of work in virtual machines while we're going to be spending some time in Windows and in Mac OS. Another operating system that we're going to be using a fair amount is Kali Linux. You can see we've got some installation prerequisites. This is actually fairly reasonable. You need some amount of hard disk space. This is 10 gig, a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM, and then some ability to do the install. It's really not an awful lot. You'll see I've actually got Kali Linux up and running here, and I'm running it inside of a virtual machine, of course, and we'll run Windows inside of a virtual machine. What I've got here is the ability to actually add a number of external devices. I've got a Linksys USB Wi-Fi interface, and I've got a Netgear Wi-Fi interface, and right here I've actually got a Bluetooth interface as well. These are all USB. The USB gives me the ability to pass these through into the virtual operating system. I could, of course, pick up the internal devices as well and pass those through. But one of the advantages of USB is it gives me a secondary device that would allow me to do some work inside the virtual machine while leaving the original device for the operating system. Now, another little computer, actually, that you can take a look at is the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a very small, very cheap computing device. It's about $35 if you just want what's essentially a card. And for a little bit more, you can get a case to go along with it. And then you can get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That will actually give you pretty much everything that you need in order to do some of the work that we are going to be doing. The new Raspberry Pi will actually run a copy of Windows 10. You can also get Kali Linux for Raspberry Pi, as well as some other versions of Linux if you want to do that. Now, there are a lot of network interfaces that you can get your hands on. So if I were to look up USB Wi-Fi, I would find a lot of different USB devices that really aren't that expensive. So if you've already got a computer somewhere, it either has Wi-Fi, maybe it doesn't have Wi-Fi, you can pick up a fairly inexpensive USB Wi-Fi device. You can also get additional Bluetooth devices reasonably cheaply. And then they're just USB. As I said, you can run virtual machines to do Linux if you don't have a Linux computer available. You can put Windows inside a virtual machine. Even if you're running Windows, you may want just kind of a sandbox that you can play with. So you don't really need an awful lot. Some computer within the last five years or so probably is going to be more than adequate for you. And then if you want to do the virtual machine route, which of course is what I'm going to be doing here so that I've got access to multiple operating systems, you can get these inexpensive USB devices if you choose. And as I said, you can just pass them right into your virtual machine and then they become just attached to the virtual machine here. So if I were to do IW config, which would show me my wireless interfaces, you can see I've actually got a wireless interface, something that you wouldn't get in a virtual machine inside of Parallels or VMware. So system requirements really aren't that much. Some of it depends on what operating system you're going to be the most comfortable with. As I said, we're going to be using little bits of Mac OS, Windows, Kali Linux. There are some tools that will run across multiple operating systems. The advantage to Kali Linux, as we'll get into in a little bit, is that it has most of the tools that we're going to be using just built right into it. So there's no additional installation required. Everything's just going to kind of work. And as I said, the system requirements for Kali Linux are fairly low. It doesn't take a lot of disk space, processing power, or memory to run Kali Linux and run it effectively.